For the imaginative writing task, you want to ensure that you are including um, a variety of senses. This doesn't necessarily mean all five. You don't want to be putting them in just for the sake of it. But just ensure you're not only focusing on, say, the sense of sight, bring in perhaps a smell, um, a feeling, a few feelings, and also sounds are very effective. In order to describe those well, you need to also be using adjectives and varying your choice of adjectives. If you are planning to use an adjective that maybe is a little bit basic or a little bit common, perhaps think of another one that you could use. Um, a synonym for that one that would perhaps be a little bit more sophisticated or a little bit more descriptive, perhaps. And that moves us on to the next point about descriptive techniques. Now, it might be a good idea to bring in a metaphor or a simile. You don't need to use them throughout. So that that just becomes messy. But perhaps just slot one or two in um, across your piece. Using different sentence starters and types is also very important. If you stick with one style of sentence, it becomes very monotonous and it's not an enjoyable read. It's not very effective. So try to vary the lengths, the structures within them. Are they, um, are they complex or are they compound? So bear in mind that obviously with the complex, it's got a support subordinate clause in it which cannot work on its own. They come up with words like when, although, if. That's when you would be using a subordinate clause. On the other side we've got our technical accuracy checklist and this one involves using um, paragraphs in your piece. Do not forget these please because if you forget to paragraph and you've just got one big block of writing then that brings down your mark quite substantially. So you want to follow the tip tops rule and if you're unfamiliar with this tip tops just tells you that you need to do a new paragraph when you change time, place, topic, person or speaker. So any time that they change move on to a new paragraph. Your punctuation also try to ensure that that is accurate. It's very common to see you using commas rather than full stops. So be aware of that. If, if it would make sense with a connective such as and, then it's most likely a full stop. Obviously that's not relevant if you're doing a list, but just um, bear that rule in mind if you are not too sure on the rule for that. You also want to vary your punctuation, so try to bring in different kinds of punctuation. Don't force it, but it might be nice to bring in some brackets or dashes. Um, could be could be a good idea also to think about um, semicolons, if you know how to use those, or colons. And it may even be worth considering an exclamation mark or a question mark. We do not want to see them throughout your piece, so use them very sparingly. But it's something to consider just to create that variety in, in the tone of the piece of writing. Your spelling also needs to be accurate. So I know that some of you possibly struggle with this a bit more than others, but just do the best you can and be aware of your spelling and check over it as well. Make sure you haven't used the wrong version of there, for example, or the wrong version of your. Okay. And finally, just linking kind of back to what I was saying earlier about your adjectives, you know, your vocabulary, try to make it ambitious. If you're about to use a verb such as walk, well, that's that's not really telling us much about how they walk. Perhaps think about do you want to use sauntered to show confidence? Do you want to use wandered to show kind of a sense of not really knowing where you're going?
The final tips I would like to leave you with, just to ensure that you don't overcomplicate this, are the recommendation is to limit the people, locations and events. So you don't really want any more than very maximum three characters. I would say also stick to just one location and one key event because most of your effort should be going into describing that event, describing that location. It doesn't have to be a full on story. It's only going to be about 50 minutes that you have in which to write this. So stick with a basic idea and then just write it very, very well. Also focus on specific objects or people. So you want to focus in on, you know, maybe your main character and there might be someone else there, but they're the main one we're going to follow. Um, or they might even be someone who, as a first person narrative, you are observing. And the same with objects. You may simply be sitting looking at a cup of coffee and there's a detailed description of the colours of the coffee. And then maybe we go introspective into our character's mind and learn more about them that way. Use um, the past tense. It's the easiest one to do. So just stick with that one, I would recommend. And in terms of your person, first person tends to be the one that's also easiest. If you want to go for third person, that's fine. But just be um, be cautious of how you are presenting your characters, because it, obviously in first person, we will get much more um, in deep, in depth perception of the character because we can go into their mind and into their feelings a lot more. With third person, it tends to be a little bit broader so you can see what's going on, but you're not necessarily in their mind in the same way as you are in first person. OK, so there's some things to consider. As I say, you may not wish to use them or you may need to slightly tweak them, but just be aware of them, please, and do not overcomplicate the task. It's about how well you are writing and how technically accurate you are. So just focus on that aspect rather than trying to throw too many events in or too much action in at once or too many people, which gets very confusing very quickly. 